rat is a climbing animal, as the name implies. The roof rat prefers to live above ground and frequently nests under the eaves of roofs. Like the Norway rat, the roof rat generally uses established runways in getting to and from its harborage. The runways of the roof rat are usually above ground. This is a typical roof rat run. It can be identified by the greasy semicircular smudges left by the rat's body where it contacts the beams. To the roof rat, a runway is a safe path followed by other rats before. Using such a runway gives a rat a sense of security. The rat knows at one end must be harborage and at the other end food or water. The runway often leads through double walls. The rat's vibrissae, or whiskers, and its long tactile hairs enable it to move safely through narrow places. The rat knows that the runway leads to an established source of food supply, as shown by its unhesitating and direct approach to the food. The roof rat is a pantry thief and is fond of cereals and grains. It is not primarily a garbage feeder, but will eat garbage when other food is not available. A rat must have access to a source of water. The need for water is conveniently fulfilled when dishes are left soaking overnight in the sink. The roof rat is peculiarly adapted to climbing. It has sensitive finger-like toes ending in talon-like nails. The front paw has four claws and a rudimentary thumb. The inside of the paw is padded. The hind paw has five toes. Equipped with these tools, the roof rat can easily climb a three-quarter inch pipe. Notice the way the rear and front paws are held in the descent. The Norway rat can climb too, but not nearly as well as the roof rat. The roof rat can crawl up a three-inch pipe with ease. The rough finish of the metal helps it to take hold with its claws. The Norway rat, by trial and error, learns to brace its back against the wall and make the climb. A roof rat, bracing its back against the wall, can climb a four-inch pipe. Without the wall, even a roof rat would be unable to climb a pipe four inches in diameter. A brick wall can be scaled by a roof rat if the edges of the brick protrude even one sixteenth of an inch. The Norway rat can pull itself up the same wall, but with a little more difficulty. A roof rat has an excellent sense of balance and can walk on a wire with skill. The Norway rat is more awkward and falls off before learning to balance itself. A roof rat can race sure-footedly along a smooth, narrow pipe. The Norway rat falls off.
The superior climbing ability of the roof rat explains its preference for nests in places like the air vent shaft on a roof. The wire mesh screen in the shaft supports the roof rat's nest. The dead space between the roof and parapet wall provides harborage. From here, the rat has access to the interior of the building by way of the soil vent pipe. In the south and southwest United States, the roof rat frequently nests in palm or other trees that provide shelter in a mild climate. They subsist partially on the fruit of the tree in which they nest. At night, by such means as service wires, they gain access to homes. Once in the building, the rat picks up established trailways leading to food. The roof rat, like the Norway, lives its entire life close to man, yet in concealment from him. In these remarkable photographs, actual scenes of the birth of a roof rat litter are shown. The mother rat, with its forepaws and teeth, helps deliver its young. The rat washes its newborn with its tongue and eats the placenta. The rat places the newborn out of the way and concentrates on each infant as it is born. It cuts the cord and consumes it. In this manner, the roof rat delivers its entire litter. The baby rats are blind and helpless. The mother rat almost immediately begins to suckle its young. As in the case of the Norway, the young roof rats are suckled for four or five weeks. By that time, they are weaned and begin to explore their environment. With growing independence, they widen their range of activity. With an increased population, and when food or harborage is scarce, vicious fighting results. Though the living habits of Norway and roof rats differ, there is a basic similarity in their life patterns. Both are fundamentally spoilers, living on man's property and eating his food. Both have physical characteristics that equip them to live undercover as parasites of man.
Both depend on their senses, particularly those of touch and smell, to move around freely in the dark. Both build their nests in concealed places. Both use established runways linking food and harborage. Although their food preferences differ, both can eat anything that man eats or discards. Sometimes there is competition between the species for the same food. In such a case, vicious fighting results. The roof rat depends on speed and agility to escape the Norway rat. But the Norway rat, which is stronger and more ferocious, wins. Wherever Norway rats invade a roof rat area, the roof rats tend to leave. Both Norway and roof rats have many natural enemies. Among these are owls, hawks, and snakes. In rural areas, rat snakes will hide in barns and fields near rat runs and stalk the rats. As the rat goes by, the snake makes a pass at the rat. The rat may defend itself or carry the battle to the snake. But once the snake has thrown a coil around the rat, the rat cannot escape. The snake will crush it and consume it later. But in spite of the rat's natural enemies, it has survived and prospered. Whichever rat it is, Norway or roof rat, it is a tenacious and adaptable animal. To meet the threat it poses, man must use his knowledge and all the scientific resources at his command. <laughs>